Get ready for all the highlights of Valley High School football. It's time for Action for Sports Sunday Sports Extra. Hello and welcome to Sunday Sports Extra Week 10 edition. Yes, hard to believe, but we are getting ready for the final week of the regular season and helping me get ready for it are the guys from 956sports.com. It is Joe Bowling, the voice of the Fox 840 sport, uh, football game of the week, and Greg Selber, the reigning Texas high school football sports writer of the year. We're going to talk about everything that happened. Let's start by talking about the big shocker, and that was Wesleyco East and Ed Couch Elsa at Bobby Lackey Stadium. What a game this was. I mean, everybody's talking about the fact that uh, you know Wesico East came through with some special teams play of course the kickoff return and then the uh, fumble recovery and before the Ed Couch Elsa fans even had a chance to sit down they were down 14 nothing but what I find is the more interesting part of this game is when Wesico East went for the kill shot well they didn't go to Aaron Mungia necessarily sure he got uh, 150 160 yards but less than what he usually gets and the big th change that they had was going to the Wildcat offense where Brandon Hernandez would take a direct snap. They go with a misdirection. You can see it right here. He takes it, loses our cameraman, goes into the end zone. He did this twice in this game. It's an interesting new wrinkle in the Wesico East offense. And after the big win, Coach Cuellar talked about it. It's no secret that Aaron's been carrying the, the load. And, and uh, we, we have to do something to kind of, you know, get a little more balance. And it, it worked to perfection again. Coaches did a heck of a job, and the kids, you know, heart, a lot of heart, and I love those guys. He loves those guys, and he loves the fact that Wesleyco East has a share of the district title, and it's a, a big share when you take a look at it. Uh, actually, those are not up. Yeah, those are updated, but Ed Couch Elson now has a loss. Rio Grande City is in. Roma Mercedes still in it for that final 4A spot. Let's take a look at the scenarios. If Hidalgo loses, then the Roma Mercedes winner is in no matter what. If Hidalgo wins, then Mercedes must win by 7 points or more in order to get in the playoffs. If Hidalgo wins and Mercedes only wins by 3, then Roma will take that final spot. But before we get to the Roma Mercedes game, let's talk a little bit about Wesico East and Ed Couch Elsa. Joe, you were at the game. Your thoughts, and uh, you picked them, but I don't think you picked them to win this way. Well, no, I didn't pick them to win this way, but but I did pick them to win. I said the crowd might carry them through. You know, you, you talk about a boxing match. You ever been to a boxing match where the first punch, you know a guy's beat, but he's not going to get knocked out? That's what happened in this ball game. Wesley Coise came out, punched him right on the chin, knocked him out. They stood up for four quarters, but they were never in this ball game. Statistically, it may look like it. <laughs> At Wesley Coise, kudos to you. Big victory. Greg, your thoughts on it? You've got a big article on the game on 956sports.com. What were your thoughts? My first thought was that you could really hear Westlaco East hitting. <laughs> Andrade and uh, Belmades, who I think is probably the best linebacker in the Valley, pound for pound. But the guy who was hitting the hardest wasn't even a defensive kid. And when Monheo runs the ball, yeah. he has low pads, he has leverage, and he has something that you can't teach, which is really strong desire. He attacks the hole, he attacks kids who want to hit him. He's unreal, man. The guy is unreal. Your thoughts on the Wildcat that uh, Wesico East brought out and the way Brandon Hernandez was able to run it? Well, they took your cameraman by surprise. They took the announcer by surprise on the first time because I thought it was a direct snap maybe to Munguia when he breaks through like that. But, uh, wow, well, what a new wrinkle to bring into the mix. You know, okay, you're still not looking at a team that's going to throw some passes at you and scare you there. But now, you know, you have to key on Munguia. What, are you not going to key on this kid? And now all of a sudden you got another one they can snap to that can break, and it's fast. That was what I was most impressed with. He got in the secondary, and nobody even got close. Not even close. A, a new wrinkle and uh, another positive for West TMW, East. too many weapons for West Coast. You know, the thing about Brandon Hernandez is he's also the guy that ran down that kid, CP, uh, when he had that two-point conversion run. That was kind of a big play, man, because that catch was about to get some momentum and get two points. I know two points doesn't mean anything, but it's, but it's something positive psychologically. Brandon ran him down and made the tackle. I like the Wildcat if it's done judiciously at the right time and at the right place on the field. Now, if you start doing it too much, uh, I, I think it probably puts confidence off of your quarterback. I mean, you know, if you're doing it in the fourth quarter, on the key drive, then the other starting quarterback sitting there going, what about me? You know, I like it if you got the weapons and if you do it middle of the field, second and third quarter. And I think that's exactly how West that's how they did it. used it.